Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Astonally Reads. Thank you for joining me today. I realized it had been a little while since I read you a first chapter or dropped in with a book talk. Uh, the last couple weeks have been pretty busy. My kids finally finished up their e-learning. My school year comes to an end technically, you know, next Monday. So I can get back to the business of reading to you and talking to you about books. So I am doing a middle to YA book, first book, uh, first chapter book read today. It's the 57 bus. You'll happen to notice that it's got the Stonewall Book Award. It's a true story. And in the time of see something, say something, this book is appropriate. All right, first chapter, super quick. Based on a true story, this really happened. Now, if you look at it, so it's written like this. I mean, it looks like there are tons of chapters, but really chapters are two or three pages a piece. And so the author's note tells us, this is a true story. All the people in this book are real. Although in some cases, pseudonyms or initials were used, young people are identified by first name only. The details of the story were pieced together from a variety of sources, including interviews, documents, letters, videos, diaries, social media posts, and public records. Quotes from these sources are verbatim, except in a few cases where I removed last names, replacing them with long dashes. Information from first-hand accounts was corroborated with official records wherever possible, unless those records are sealed or are not available to the public. In those cases, I relied on the memories of witnesses and participants. The pronouns and names used for gender non-conforming people were approved by the people in question. The 57 bus. Monday, November 4th, 2013. By 4.30 in the afternoon, the first mad rush of after-school passengers had come and gone. What's left are the stragglers and stay laters swiping their bus passes as they climb onto the 57 bus and take seats among the coming home workers, the shoppers and errand doers, the other students from high schools and middle schools around the city. The bus is loud, but not as loud as sometimes. A few clusters of kids are shouting and laughing and an older woman at the front keeps talking to the driver. Dark is coming on. Daylight savings ended yesterday, and now evening rushes into place where afternoon used to be. Everything is duskier, sleepier, winterier now. Passengers look at their phones or stare through the scratched and grimy windows at the waning light. Sasha sits near the back. For much of the journey, the teenager has been reading a paperback copy of Anna Karenina for a class in Russian literature. Today, like most days, Sasha wears a t-shirt, a black fleece jacket, a gray flat cap, and a gauzy white skirt. A senior at a small private high school, the teenager identifies as agender, neither male nor female. As the bus lumbers through town, Sasha puts down the book and drifts into sleep, skirt draped over the edge of the seat. A few feet away, three teenage boys are laughing and joking. One of them, Richard, wears a black hoodie and an orange-billed New York Knicks hat. A 16-year-old junior at Oakland High School, he's got hazel eyes and a slow, sweet grin. He stands with his back to Sasha, gripping the pole for balance. Sasha sleeps as Richard and his companions goof around play fighting. Sleeps as Richard's cousin Lloyd bound, bounds up and down the aisle flirting with a girl up front. Sleeps as Richard surreptitiously flicks a lighter and touches it to the hem of that gauzy white skirt. Wait. In a moment, Sasha will be inside. Sasha will wake inside a ball of flames and begin to scream. In a moment, everything will be set in motion. Taken by an ambulance to a San Francisco burn unit, Sasha will spend the next three and a half weeks undergoing multiple surgeries to treat second and third degree burns running from calf to thigh. Arrested at school the following day, Richard will be charged with two felonies, each with a hate crime clause that will add time to his sentence if he is convicted. Citing the severity of the crime, the district attorney will charge him as an adult, stripping him of the protections normally given to juveniles. Before the week is out, he will be paid, he will be facing the possibility of life imprisonment. But none of that has happened yet. For now, both teens are just taking the bus home from school. Surely it's not too late to stop things from going wrong. There must be some way to wake Sasha, 
divert Richard, get the driver to stop the bus. There must be something that you can do. See something, say something. Yep. All right. I'll be back with you. Check out another book. Talk to you later. Bye.